Here we dig through the ditches and burn through the witches, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's what we do, baby. We one, one, one witch at a time. One, one witch at a time. Nice. All right, let's get this rolling. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I am your host, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me, as always, is... Gary Elmore. And unfortunately, Neil Riley could not be with us tonight, but he sends his regards, and we will miss him dearly. This week, we are <laughs> pleased to welcome back host of the Everly Growing and Popularity podcast. Beautiful. Said Johnny, yeah, it was a tongue twister there for a second. Uh, <laughs> of the podcast, movies so bad they're good, and and uh, host of the Facebook group, movies so bad they're good, midnight cult classics and camp. Ian Webb, Ian, welcome back. Uh, I'm back, baby. I love how you all of your introductions, whenever you <laughs> say "Hey, I'm back" or "Hello" or "Thanks for having me," it's always it always sounds like some. LA radio DJ. He's just like, hey, 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 it's Ian. Hey, 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 I'm back over here with Johnny and the boys. Oh, oh my God. Dirt, dirty Mike and the boys. Thanks for the shag and wag. Or what was it? Thanks for the fuck mobile. Thanks for the F shack. Love, love dirty, dirty Mike, Mike and, and the boys. boys. Oh, I love the other guys. That's a great movie. Uh, and we also welcome back to the podcast. You know what? I'm not going to. Give him an insulting introduction. <laughs> okay. Because I, I, genu I genuinely do love this guy. Yes. I just don't want him to know. Yes. Because it, it makes for John better radio. John Reese Davis. John Reese Davis. Well, I'm glad glad to have you on the podcast. Jo and John Lovitz. Yes. We're welcoming both Wait, of them. Back. Back. Three Johns. Yeah. That would be great. Hey, kids. <laughs> okay, I can't wow. do a John Lovitz impersonation. Oh, <laughs> that God. was a failed attempt. It stinks. I don't we think anybody back. could ever, you ever <laughs> attempt to be John Lovitz ever. Probably not. Never. That, Probably that would not. never happen. Anybody, nobody we had an idea for a, a to podcast one time called uh, Lots of Lovitz. <laughs> Lots of Lovitz. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I always think A Cup of Coffee with John Lovitz yeah. was the original one that, that uh, the Tom Booker episode when he came on. I mean, we could just have a bunch of different podcasts with John Lovitz. I'd be okay with that. I'd totally be yeah. okay with that. Can you John imagine Lovitz, the ratings we get? you want to give get? me a call? Yeah. we just like, than one don't, person. don't even have him. Just like claim you have him, but don't. It's like yeah. waiting for Godot, but waiting for John Lovitz. <laughs> waiting for John. That's, oh, that's, another, wow. that's another podcast title. Anyways, we do have to welcome our other <laughs> oh, yes. guests that we have. I mean, you don't uh, have Jacob to. Jacob Johnson from you can just keep riffing. host of the <laughs> podcast, uh, Reese and Jacob versus Evil. Jacob, welcome back. We are so privileged to have you grace us with your presence. As you should be. In, indeed. See, this is, you know what? I can't do it. I can't do it. He's just so smug and fucking full of himself that I just, I can't be nice to him. You know what, Jacob? I'm going to be mean to you the entire episode now. So because, wow. because of that comment. Yes. Because Feed me. Comment. Okay. Feed her. Feed, Feed me her. See more. <laughs> Feed me all speaking of sh long. Speaking of shitty films that aren't Human Centipede, um... <laughs> You better not be talking about Little Shop of Horrors. That's I'm, all I I'm, have to no, say. No, I was okay. no feed her. I was yeah, talking no, yeah. about where he's jiggling the woman's belly and human centipede trying yeah. to get her to shit oh. into the other woman's belly. Oh, wow. Two great movies. <laughs> Little Shop of Horrors and Human Centipede. No, the first the first two human centipede movies of the oh. trilogy. The third one not worth watching. Yeah, the human caterpillar was not something I ever no. wanted to see. Uh, I'm Every, just gonna let you check it out. I'm not even gonna describe yeah. it. Just check it out. Yeah. Everything else I'd take my kids to, but not those. Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay to let your kids watch a watch a film where a, a guy's jerking off into sandpaper. Uh, yeah, or that, with sandpaper. Yeah, and into it. Both really. It was a very disturbing, very disturbing scene. Oh my god. Um, so okay, I I I, I got to start us off with this little debate. Ian and I were kind of chatting about it, and I guess we kind of recorded. A brief intro to it. Uh, I saw House of a Thousand Corpses for the first time ever in my existence. I know, I know, I probably should have seen it much earlier at some point. Of course, now I'm regretting seeing it. Um, it was a horrible piece of hot trash. Uh, it wasn't even a movie so bad. It was good. It was just a movie so bad I wanted to gouge my eyes out. Uh, okay. Ian, your thoughts? I love it. I, I just, oh yeah, you, you hit me up randomly oh okay. at like 11 p.m. And you were like, what do what you think about House Thousand Corpses? And I was like, I love it. It's great. You're like, I'm trying to sleep, god damn it. <laughs> yeah, that too. I want to go to bed. That, that too, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure that. In, in I'm fact, not sure that Ian and I agree fact, on anything. In fact, I'm going to go to bed right now. Like, I mean, it's already like yeah. almost midnight, Like, but... I, I, I hey, we're night owls, baby. It's the bewitching I, I, hour. It I, is bewitching I can't hour. help but be a part of y'all. Like uh, y'all are great. So, <laughs> well, we're always glad to have you, man. Uh, look, here's the thing, and I know that I know Jacob and I actually finally agree on something. It's it's an anomaly, I know, for sure, <laughs> but we do agree 
on not enjoying this film. No, no, I don't like, know, man. I just okay. Well, like, how <laughs> did you go upon it? Like, yeah, here's the thing: I didn't like how Silence of Eclipse is the first time I saw it either. Um, but I, I love it. it. Don't I tell me. Don't be now. one of those guys that says I'll get. I'll Actually, get Johnny, the Johnny, message when I watch <laughs> the, the real time. question is: Would you rather watch that or Human Centipede again? Oh, dude, I will, I will watch Easily fucking House of a Thousand Corpses for every day. I would probably day. watch House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> Look, I mean, Human Centipede is a lot to take in. It's a lot of gore. But I don't, humans, uh, there was, you guys know me. A lot of how, why I love film is it's based on the storyline, the arc of the characters, the relatability to them. And I didn't like any of the characters, even with Rain mm-hmm. Wilson not, making that Not even Sin Haig as no. Captain Spaulding. No. So who do you relate to in the human centipede? I was about to say. Who do I relate to? I don't remember any of the probably. person. <laughs> <laughs> the guy at the end. The, I don't know. The, I, you know, yeah, I guess the, the, the shit middle, eater. Taking everybody's shit. Yeah, the shit eater. The guy taking every uh, everybody's waste <laughs> mm. <laughs> from every angle. But anyway, um, I, I, so I, told, I told Johnny the other day when he, he was messaging me as he was watching a movie and just hating it. I was like, look. Rob Zombie is like Quentin Tarantino, and the fact that he is oh. mostly a fan of these types of movies of from the seventies. Tarantino like, does it well. Rob Zombie does it well too, in a way. No, oh, he doesn't. In a way. Okay. What way? I'll, I'll, spare, I'll, spare, I'll spare all belief. I'm going to spare all belief that that, or excuse me, disbelief in what you're saying. Uh, tell me, how, how does he do it well? I, 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 th- I think, well, first of all, the color palette was excellent. Okay, but was that him or was that his production designer, like the person that's in charge I, I of like, the artistic know. direction? It's probably like a mixture <laughs> of both. I mean, it's his direction, so you can't like, like, yeah. well, I mean, see, like, I mean, a lot of that movie, thing, like, Rob Zombie, like, he is a fan of 70s horror movies, especially uh, the one that really comes to mind is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Two, yeah. Sure. Okay. Definitely two. And also, uh, it's even got Bill Mosley in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's what yeah. I wanted to be a part of this, like, podcast for sure is that Bill Mosley, yeah, yeah, he was Chop Top and then he was Otis and he fucking wrecked his Otis. Um, yeah, you should have yeah. been on here last week, Ian. I was uh, talking about how much I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. You were. Nice. You were. Nice. So I guess that's – here's my question, Ian, to you. Is it just House of a Thousand Corpses that you loved, or is it all or most of Rob Zombie's films? Because he's he's done a decent amount. What, he's got 10, okay. 8 or 10 under his belt, okay. right? Yeah. I'll, like I'll, I'll, I'll just go through them. House of a Thousand Corpses, I love, but not as, like – as a, a fucking masterpiece film it's not that sure. like if, if you look into it as that you will just be disappointed like i didn't like it the first time i saw it and i understand why you don't like it it's pretty much it's a love letter to fucking horror movies of the 70s mostly the 70s no it's a suicide note to and the horror movies 80s. of the 70s no it's no no like up, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fucking um you know it, it it's a it's a like a prodigy thing. It's like it's yeah. he he really loved those movies, and that's what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to be a great filmmaker. He was just trying to be like, hey, I love these movies. This is my tribute. That's what he did, and that's cool. Now uh, his next movie, Devil's Rejects, he took much more seriously, and I take it much more seriously, and we should all take it more, much much more seriously than House of Thorns, House of Thorns and Corpses. Um, okay. and Devil's Rejects is much better, and I like that better. Now his next movie was Halloween. I I liked yeah. it. Some people don't like it. I understand why they don't like it, but I mean, I, I think he did a good job. Um, okay. But Halloween two sucked. Two, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then uh, the next one was that witches movie that I'm I'm blanking on the name of. Hocus 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 Pocus? Come on now, that was a great movie. <laughs> Rob Zombie's Hocus Pocus. <laughs> He's gonna have yeah. his wife play uh, Bette Midler's part. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I am surprised that uh, like that Tim Burton yeah. hasn't remade Hocus Pocus. I am a little shocked with, too, actually. Uh, Helen Bo- Bonham Carter. Bonham Carter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, they divorced, oh, so. is uh, Salem something? Salem. Uh, Lords of Salem. Still Lords of Salem. That movie sucked. 
Okay. Um, what about th- like 31? Then, and then he did 31. 30, 31. Okay. So let's let's take a trip back to a couple of months ago when we talked about um, the the like, Gore Fest movies. And we were like, hey, right. Gore rules. 31 is ex- yeah. a perfect example of a movie that like we all loved of gore fest and like there, there's there's parts where like clowns have sh- have fucking chainsaws and they like chainsaw people to death and there's like blood squirting everywhere it's awesome if you like that kind of thing okay if you don't like that sure. kind of thing then it's terrible but <laughs> um what did uh uh what did one cannibal clown say to the other oh no <laughs> what gary does this taste funny to you you're banned from this fucking show. <laughs> I'm revoking all talking for all that you've ever had. You're, I'm going to edit out your edit. Oh, no. I guess when you re edit this later. <laughs> the director's cut. The director's cut without Gary. <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, 30, 31 is great as far as like Gore Fest goes, which, Johnny, you, you already said you liked, so you have no. Um, like you, you, you can't, right. you can't Sorry, say can't, that can't it sucks it. because you already said that you like that kind of thing. So anyway, true. And then there but was typically a lot of a lot of the movies that follow that gore fest uh, formula that I do like. Oh, they dude, typically it's, still it's do so have great. some type of coherent so story great <laughs> in that in that fact. Uh, anything okay. other than I've that? I've never seen it, so I can't, so I can't comment on it. Then, uh, it okay. pro- All right. Then, then the, he did uh, three from hell, which was terrible because. Unfortunately, the great Sid Haig, he was dying. Who he played mm-hmm. uh, Captain Spaulding, who I fucking loved. Right. But you already said you didn't like him. He, so he, he was. Suck. I will give you this. He was definitely the most enjoyable actor in the entire film. I will give Dude, you that. Sid Haig is he's great. certainly the one that if you I didn't, if you look into his most. old films, like <laughs> he, he was in, um, he, he he was in some Pam Greer movies like Foxy Brown and Coffee and stuff back in the seventies, like some great cult films. He he was yeah. great, and so he was dying, and so uh, unfortunately Rob Zombie had to change the script at the last minute, and it was just it was terrible. Like Three from Hell was just absolutely terrible. Okay, okay, well. Uh, Jacob, yes. uh, you and I were chatting about this, uh, and so I want to know your opinion really quick on the great Rob Zombie. Your opinion on on his films? You have seen more of his than I have, and I think you're you're probably closer to I am in like, this area. So, uh, like two or three. Like I haven't seen uh, Lords of Salem thirty one or Three from Hell, but I don't care for his Halloween movies. Uh, but I do love, or I remember loving Devil's Rejects. It has been like maybe 10 years since I've seen that movie. But like Ian said, it's such a step up from House of a Thousand Corpses, which I just recently watched the last week or two. And just yeah. in style and direction as well, like it actually has like a straightforward story compared to House of a Thousand Corpses, which is like jumping all over the place. Okay. Like, like I think the best part to me of House of a Thousand Corpses is when it, is when it does go full grindhouse at the end with like Doctor Satan, and you have like this entire yeah. like Nazi lab underneath the house, and it's like, oh man, this is like some like Wolfenstein, like '90s sure. era id doom quake type of uh, aesthetics going that's stuff i really love but yeah. like a lot of the editing and the action sequences were just awful but i mean you know, it's kind Honestly, of it's, the I, point in a lot of ways like ian was saying it's yeah. like he was he was doing it on purpose to be like as schlocky as it was sure i and, will i will say this so I'll, I'll give rob zombie credit because he has a wide variety of stuff that he does you know whether people like it or not, like, because he's like a so. he, he's a singer and songwriter, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Outside of like, the, yeah. I thought you meant the type of movies he does. No, I was like, no, no yeah. they're all like identical. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, like, you know, he, you know, tries to be a Renaissance man. You know, whether you like his work or not, you know, at least you know he's out yeah. there. I can respect a guy that is multifaceted and has skills in different areas. I'm right. not. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about just purely as a director and a filmmaker. Right. I, okay. I think the world would probably be just fine if he never made another film but, but that's johnny, just ha, you know. johnny have you seen devil's rejects i haven't well then you don't know i've seen 
his I've seen his I've seen his two Halloween remakes, which were I, I hated them both. And then House of a Thousand Corpses, which was a cult classic. And so I just I was like, OK, I'll give this one a chance. Maybe it'll be better. And then it was so bad. It made my girlfriend <laughs> nauseous. And she had to, she actually went had to go throw up. See, the whoa. sound It's I'm cool with heavy metal, man. But like the audio mixing was just it. There was too many screeches. And they just like they came in at random points when there wasn't even a horror moment. And the cuts were like between that old video footage and what was currently happening it just didn't make any sense. It just, I, I couldn't follow it. It was just all over the place. Um, sorry, I interrupted you, but go ahead. I thought I did. Um, so I don't know. I, I agree to disagree on this one. Um, I, 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 I will give Devil's Rejects a shot. But if, uh, if you, I don't like you it, will, I'm never well, watching any of his other films. <laughs> yeah, I, well, yeah, that's fine because there's not many other films to watch. And but, did you, uh, okay. Johnny, did you, you watch the Grindhouse, uh, werewolf feature, yeah, right? Sure. Absolutely. And you know, yeah, he was a, pro- wasn't he a producer on that or well, something? He did the werewolf women of the SS trailer in between them. You remember that okay. one? See, that was cool, yeah. but they only gave him two minutes basically to mm-hmm. do that. It's, and that's probably yeah, the amount know, of time. He you also did a, a CSI though. Miami episode. He did a CSI Miami episode. Okay. Yeah. I've never watched i watched the old csi the original but i've never seen the miami i series. like ncis better really like ncis better yeah uh, like I, I like gary so take that okay well, and nypd blue so. So yeah, well anyway like you know, i was saying how sausage corpses like he he was he was already a really famous uh, you know he had, he had two famous Musician bands he had white zombie and a rob right. zombie he was fine he right. just did a movie just because that was all okay. it was just because it was like he loved Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He loved right. Hills Have Eyes. He mixed them both together. Cool. Both, both fantastic movies and, and, and series. But, it just, is, you know, I mean, I love which is so strange to think about, like, how come he did Halloween as a remake instead of Texas Chainsaw Massacre <laughs> or even try to do like his own. Texas Chainsaw yeah, I, I, I don't Why not know. Make a remake of. Yeah. Yeah, because he could have, because that remake with Jessica Biel, that came out in what, 2006 or, or three. Five, three? Oh, was it three? Yeah. Okay. So but, House whoa. of a Thousand Corpses was a few years before that, right? Or were they both around the same year? House of a Thousand Corpses. It, it was a little bit later. Yeah. It was 03. Okay. But okay. So Del- they, they Del- could have made so like, he, he actually took that more seriously than he did House of a Thousand Corpses. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Is that, right. like, like once he established that cult following from House of Thousand Corpses, he was like, okay, well, people actually, like, expect me to, like, make movies now. So he did Devil's Rejects, which was amazing. Sure. Like, the the first beginning of it, it starts out as, like, a shootout with, like, all the House of Thousand Corpses people. Then it, it turned into a montage with uh what what's it called the um uh what, what, what was the name of the song uh damn it i'm i'm, I'm forgetting but um it, it was a really good montage at the beginning um okay damn it I forget it was well, different. The Allman I think Brothers. We can agree to disagree it was a, it was a the montage Allman with the Allman Brothers. Who else can do a montage with the Allman Brothers in the beginning of the movie? Probably lots of artists. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're an excellent band. Also, I, like, I, I, I made... kind of uh, does its own take on like uh, Bonnie and Clyde as well because it's kind of like a road trip murder movie. Oh. Uh huh. That's it. That's see. That's interesting. Like that. That premise interests me the premise of these people are these kids are traveling across country to write a, a novel about peculiar and absurd Spooky things side trips people can make yeah exactly mm-hmm. and then they get you know trapped in the house by the crazy family or the crazy one crazy murder or whatever and they experiment on them it's been done so many times i just you know yeah. did, did you guys ever see that geico commercial where it's like all the kids that are like running around the like the dark house and there's like the leather face like guy after them and the kids are like where are we gonna go and they're oh, like, we, oh, we the should hide chainsaws <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah. like, we sh- should we hide in the cemetery? No, let's hide in the barn with all the chainsaws. <laughs> you know what I, I really just took loved? the running car. You know what I really I mean, loved I... was the um, the part in Detroit Rock City, the Kiss movie, where they see the hitchhiker and they're like, we should pick up the hitchhiker. No, wait, that's how horror movies start. Yeah, but that's how poor movies start, too. 
<laughs> take your pick. Yeah, I mean, take your pick. I mean, it's it's a gamble. Yeah, it's you got a fifty fifty shot of a, a happy ending or a really gruesome uh, one. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I'll bitch and moan about about it all day, but you know, different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Um, so, if yeah, if you're if you're a if you're a big fan of God, I don't know, Ian, who would you? compare rob zombie to like his style of directing or jacob i mean you guys have seen more of his stuff than i have um I'm, is there anybody you could compare him to I mean, like yeah. any well especially like especially house, house with a thousand corpses he tries to emulate like toby hooper's texas chainsaw massacre too a lot tries definitely tries. texas his, uh, falls on his face uh, yeah. but I mean, like, two. his leathery face yeah and then uh devil's rejects kind of reminds me of is it alexander aja like his remake of like hills have eyes uh-huh. That's what that's what Devil's Rejects. And, and he he of. got he got the guy from Hills of Eyes too. Oh yeah. Oh, did he? Okay, I did not know that. Yeah, the um, well, one of the actors from Hills of Eyes. Like he he. That's also what's great about Rob Zombie is that he gets the actors from these old movies that they can't really, you know that. It was their one claim to fame, and you got the guy from Hills Have Eyes, you got Bill Bosley from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 to be Otis in these movies. He got Sid Haig from these old movies to be Captain Spaulding. Yeah, his, and, his, his passion yeah. love for like horror definitely shines through those movies. Sure, it's it's just because he's a, a super fan doesn't mean that he should be right. directing a multi million dollar yeah. film. Understandable, like but it's still <laughs> like Kevin. Yeah, like Kevin James, Gary. <laughs> what did Kevin James direct recently? Uh, that's the guy that did the uh, Clerks, Clerks, right? That did what? Clerks? No, that's, that's Kevin Smith. Smith. Kevin Smith. Yeah, I'm sorry, Kevin James. Kevin I'm James Kevin from Smith. King of Queens. Yes, <laughs> and all those Adam Sandler films. And I the movie like Zookeeper. Pixels was good. I Pixels, like was, Pixels. was an entertaining. It's got a lot of hate. If you like Adam Sandler, um, yeah. It, okay, if you're wait, if you're a wait, fan of sure old Pixels time, is good. Pixels is a great you, movie. Pixels, I did enjoy. Actually, yeah. guys, I like Adam Sandler films. Dumb. I know Adam Sandler films are stupid, look, but I like. Them. I'm, I'm not so going to defend. Uh, look, I'm not going to defend all of Adam Sandler's work. I'm not going to do it. Jack and Jill. <laughs> you better I'm not. Not going to defend that. <laughs> yeah, but Pixels <laughs> was a great movie. No, it was not. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anywho, uh, if you like those old uh, horror horror movies from the from the eighties there and seventies, uh, yeah, maybe check out uh, Rob Zombie if you if you're not familiar with him, and if you're a fan of good comedy, check out Adam Sandler. Yep, early Sandler, early Sandler, probably probably more. Or probably not than Sandler. what I just said. Let's move on to our actual topic. <laughs> actual. For, I think topic we just spent thirty day. minutes talking about Rob Zombie. <laughs> so. I'm, uh, I'm glad we, we spent 30 minutes talking about Rob Zombie. I, I'm actually I, pretty I happy. That was, that, was, that was a good pixels. combo. Yeah, and, and then talking about pixels. We could spend 30 minutes talking about How pixels. How awesome pixels yeah. is. Yeah. Talking it's about a great uh, movie. Dennis Dugan, I think, is the guy that directs most of Sandler's films. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look. Um, but our topic for tonight is horror villains you wouldn't want to meet in a back alley. So bum, bum, in bum. honor of October and All Hallows Eve month, uh, we are trying to keep all of our podcasts for this month uh, horror or Halloween related. So we're going to kind of just jump into this. Um, I did want to talk about what makes an iconic horror villain, uh, what makes them scary, what makes them memorable. I think we're all going to have probably a few of the same Mm-hmm. standard iconic ones right uh let's see if we we don't necessarily we will dive in later to the more underrated non-mainstream ones but maybe we can find a couple that are in the uh the second tier and then we'll jump into like the third and fourth tier later um so i do want to start with uh we'll start with gary okay tonight we'll start with uh, one of our hosts uh gary for you what makes an iconic memorable scary horror villain i would say that would be something that makes them feel unique and okay. You know, they it makes you terrified of what can happen around them, and it makes you jump like literally, in, in, you know, out of your chair. You know, you lean forward. You know, it, it makes you have a hard time sleeping at night. It makes you sure. be afraid to turn the lights off. And that right. could be somebody that it could be a villain that um, you see a lot or that you don't see a lot, uh, and it allows your imagination to kind of carry that. Lots so, of I, I yeah. can't remember who said the exact quote, but th- there was there's always been one that's been going around stating the scariest monster in a horror film is your imagination. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. 
your imagination gets you and so understands. You're saying so. You're so fo- to follow up on what mm-hmm. what you're saying. What makes a memorable one for you? Is it the way they for you personally? Is it the way they look? Is it the way they move? Or is it the way they sound? Uh, movement to me uh, plays a big piece of the puzzle like sure. the Baba Duke, how that kind of oh, moved. God. I the I, claymation I, in that was spectacular. It, it, anything going. that moves like kind of like a fly that's that really just sort of jerky movement back yeah. and forth. The quick twitching motions. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't re- like th- that kind of gets to me. Um you know the sound is also like really critical, but I, I would say my the the first thing would be movement. Because okay. you could have somebody that looks normal and just moving in a weird way and that could be kind of terrifying. Okay. And we'll we'll get into and I, Jacob may actually talk about it, so I'm not, I'm not going to bring it up. I'll let him mention it if he mentions it. Um, okay, so Jacob, we'll swing it over to you. Uh, for you, what makes an iconic, memorable horror villain that makes you sleep with uh, Night Night? <laughs> uh, so obviously, it'll be something subjective. So something that terrifies me the most is, like, sound. Uh, like you okay. said, yeah. anything, uh, like, my imagination is the scariest thing possible. So anything... I tr- I've like I've seen most horror movies and stuff like there's nothing that actually scares me from sight itself it's usually from what I'm hearing what I'm listening to whether it's like loud bangs or even just like a villain's voice or the sounds they make yeah, was- uh, that stuff terrifies me more or even just um, what I can't see uh, anytime that has like a sort of uh, corporeal form like it just doesn't have a form at all yeah. but some whatever it's doing to me slash whatever I can hear Slash feel is different than actually seeing it. So that kind of stuff terrifies me the most. Um, right. What was it that you were thinking I was going to mention? I actually, I honestly thought you were going to mention the entity from It Follows. Yeah, I mean, that Yeah, that can still be one because it doesn't really have like a, yeah. like a solid form. And then it even appears in shots right. where it has no form whatsoever. Like the part where it grabs that one girl by the hair, but it's completely invisible. Right. Like that stuff is pretty terrifying, like paranormal activity, uh, like the first one in general, like uh, got me pretty good because like I grew up in a household with a parent who had night terrors. So that kind of stuff always got me. Um, anything I can't, it's not about seeing, it's what I can actually hear or feel. That always gets me more than actually like something like like I can see that or it, the anticipation, or the, the buildup. Yeah, because yeah. the other part of it, it would be like, oh, yeah, it'd be the charisma of what makes a horror, good horror movie villain. You know, like Freddy Krueger, it kind of like taps into the fear of dying or the the uh, sort of hits that endorphin rush, like whenever you get hurt and stuff. But you also kind of laugh at the same time. It's like, oh, this guy is like killing me, but he's being pretty funny. And it's like you kind of want those kind of characters, Freddie, Jason, Michael Myers. But at the same time, if you want something that truly terrifies you, it should tap into whatever dark sector of your brain that uh, maybe something tr- like something traumatic happened to you as a child that taps into it more than actually like jokes. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, Ian, what about you? What makes an iconic horror mm-hmm. film for you? Uh, definitely out of the box, you know, there's always the classic, you know, the monster that doesn't, can't, can be killed and just, you know, keeps on coming, which is, you know, great. You know, I love Michael Myers. I love Jason Voorhees in that way, or, you know, the, but something that's really like out of the box that you've never really seen before, um, or, you know, something that may not have a body, such as the evil from Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 God, you know, and that's for, for me, especially, it's kind of a combo of all those. The ones that really get me are the figures that you can kind of make out, but you're not they're They're, they're almost they're not ghosts that they're they're almost translucent. That you you can kind of see through mm-hmm. them, you kind of can't. It's just like the dark room, and you think you see something in the corner, and the light turns on, and there's fucking nothing there. And then it goes, it pans back, or like it zooms back to the character, and then right behind him is is the beast. And the mm-hmm. beast's face doesn't scare me as much as that anticipation when I see the figure in the corner of the room. Mm-hmm. And the one that really got me was Gary. You brought up. I was gonna bring that up too. The Babadook. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think at this point, that's probably grown from a tier four or three up to closer to a tier two or tier one as far as how many people know about it just because of its popularity over the last right. five years yeah um the the like that 
Okay, oh, oh, that, we're not, oh, we're not talking oh, about oh, The Conjuring. Oh. No, good God, we're not talking about The Conjuring. So when we, we, saw, we saw The Conjuring for the first time a, uh, a while back, and I made Gary watch it when I first, uh, when I first when he and I were first living together um, a while back. And that when they play that hide and clap game, every so the one scene is where the mom has her, she's blindfolded, and she's trying to search for the youngest daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's like, clap once, and you hear the clap twice. And then you see <laughs> on the other side, it's that perfect shot from James Wan. So I love this guy so much. It's that shot. You see her in the hall, but directly into the girl's bedroom, you see the dresser doors open up and it goes clap three. And these old, ugly witches hands come out and nothing but the hands come out from mm-hmm. the clothes and they clap slowly. Well, that's and just a really good jump day, scare. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, o- yeah. Honest, honest to God. To, uh, me doing that gave, made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Gary would mm-hmm. actually do that to me when I wouldn't know he was home. I would like I'd come in like you'd hear the garage door open and I'd walk in and yeah. just out of nowhere from the back room I would hear yep uh-huh. and I would just I jump yeah. every time <laughs> and hide under his bed in a shower you know oh get the fuck out of my bed there's, <laughs> there's not enough room to hide under my bed get the hell out. <laughs> um, but yeah for me it's it's definitely I'd have to go with. I'd have to go with Jacob. That sound for me is probably the biggest okay. one. The creature you can't see, but sound is that biggest one, man. The voice, mm-hmm. the footsteps. For sure. Yeah. It's just your imagination just getting away yeah. with you. It just. That's why, like, God, it just. It, like, that's why that first paranormal activity works so well, right? Like, the performances are pretty, yeah. whatever. Like, obviously, like, amateurish, right. but, like, the parts where, like, doors slam in the middle of the night or you hear like the 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 slow walk to running of the creature or the entity approaching them, that stuff or or even like the very end when she's screaming mike uh, or mika at the very end because it's like oh you're listening you're basically yeah. he- hearing the person you love most literally calling out for your help and you feel almost completely powerless to actually reach out to them and it's yeah yeah that stuff that yeah. stuff hits me more than anything that could be like uh, like demonic or like that's something that has like a terrifying form in itself it's the helpless yeah i feel like the one the one that has always freaked me out the most since i was a child and maybe it was maybe it was my devout christian upbringing mm-hmm. you know um and the fact that i've not denounced it but i've i've definitely denounced definitely it. Yeah. yeah um i've definitely you know you pray to floated away from that. it's cool you know <laughs> yeah yeah, I, I, I carved 666 on my left ass cheek. Um, no, it's it, maybe it's maybe it's the fact that I just grew up with that, that mm-hmm. if you were if you sinned at all, if you broke any one of the Ten Commandments or, mm-hmm. you know, you had you had any one of the seven deadly sins tied to your soul, that mm-hmm. Satan would come from hell and drag you to the depths. Mm-hmm. And I was just always terrified. Ghosts and witches terrified me a bit, but demons in particular and and. Uh, um, Oh, I'm having a brain fart. Uh, possession, uh, excuse me, d- possession of your body. That that kind of stuff always got in my head the most. So for me, anytime I see a demonic possession film, mm-hmm. those are the ones that really get me. Like, so, so you like Fallen? You must have really loved because it also had Denzel Washington in it. <laughs> there you go, and, um, John, and John Goodman, the number one actor. <laughs> honestly, ex- yeah, that's right. Wait, that's a throwback. <laughs> Exorcism of Emily Rose was honestly, and I've seen it now, and I'm like, ah, eh, it's not as scary. But when I was in high school, I actually woke up around 3 a.m. for about four weeks straight Mm -hmm. we're at 257 or 259 and i thought i was going to smell smoke and i thought that satan was going to come to possess me Mm -hmm. and it just freaked me the fuck out the movie itself wasn't even that scary like it you know a little bit and good it's an all right film um but it i don't know man just for me it's always been it's always been demonic films those have always been the type of creature that has freaked me out the most uh what about you guys i mean I, there's a lot of different ones mm-hmm. um uh gary what about you what you know is, is it the slashers is it the is it the witches what is it what what freaks you out the most no i mean i think that uh something like that you don't have any way to really defend against so like uh the evil yeah. dead um, you know, that's just something, again, that's sort of a possession kind of thing going yeah. on. And there's no way you can really uh, hey, stop Ian. that. Ian. Um, and uh, it, it that's really, for me, one of the things that kind of, uh, you know, freaks me out is just like not You're being so able so to have a, you know, a chance sure. to, to interact and like determine my fate, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Ian, what about you? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I heard your girlfriend talking in the background to you, so I figured I put them. Yeah. Uh, 
No, no, no. It's cool. No, we were we were just debating what type of horror villain is gets you the most. Is it is mm. it is it the, de- is yeah. the demonic presence? Is it the witch? Is it the slasher? Uh, like what is it? What do you, well, you like, like I said, I, I'm I'm my favorite is probably the Evil Dead, in which is the is is the evil presence that does not have a form, but like say like in the evil so, dead that it takes over the forms of your friends that right. are now like pretty much trolling you in a way that's okay. a great point yeah. yeah is so is it is it so have do you do you see this to be a common trend in demonic films that you watch like films with a demonic presence mm-hmm. as the antagonist typically like those are the ones that uh, you not, not necessarily you know I, I like i like a lot of them like you know all, all the above really like you know i like the uh texas chainsaw massacre where there's you know there, there's an actual person uh love their face in that example that or you okay. know, actually, so, there's so many you don't have a particular that one example. that freaks you. Yeah, you know, I, I like them all. You know, I, I like the person that's actually like an insane killer that is that's there. Or I like the monster. In which case, you know, I like um, like even even the classic ones. You know, like Dracula, for example. Yeah, okay. Drac- Drac- I guess yeah, the old black and white Dracula mm-hmm. ones. Did you guys ever see the old movie Count Alucard? Mm-hmm. You ever heard of that one? Actually, no. no. Okay, so Dracula spelled backwards to, for, I mean, obvious Duh. reason. So it was, it was on, I used to watch when I was a kid, I would watch, you know, remember uh, Turner classic movies would have like their, their 24, 48 hours of nonstop horror movies. I guess now they're at a full month, but back in the nineties, they were like yeah. a couple days. And, uh, you know, that, that was like Wolfman and that one were yeah, two that always came on. Man, that kind of yeah, thing. And yeah. And it always, it always, yeah, that one always scared the crap out of me. Um, Jacob, what about you? Like type of type of monster that that still to this day freaks you out the most? That still maybe gives you nightmares. Who knows? Oh, it's it's more natural. So like Jaws, like okay. Jaws still terrifies me. Like I still don't like going in the ocean. Um, <laughs> and it's not because like I'm afraid of sharks. I think sharks are fascinating. I think they're like amazing. Like I was obsessed with sharks as a kid. Love giant squid. But it's more not the the actual fear of seeing them but it's like the fear of not knowing what's underneath my feet whenever i go swimming because you've got like right. mm-hmm. miles of ocean underneath you and you don't know what's down there so it's that fear yeah. of uh, the unknown the fear of the others so that kind of terrifies me the most and then also the idea of this thing that isn't out to kill you personally it just wants to use you uh to feed or to you know like better itself it's not it's not killing you because like it hates you it kills you because it just you know just so like alien or yeah, something like, like the, that the xenomorph the, like, yeah see that's the thing the fate like the the xenomorph never scared me it was always the face hugger. yes yeah, the yeah. face hugger scared me the most because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Imagine mm-hmm. That it's small yeah, it it's tiny it, it can come out from you can't see it coming yeah, it's, yeah. it's literally raping you um it's implanting <laughs> its egg into your chest and then that thing grows and bursts out so like the, right. the face hugger chest burster combo is terrifying to me combo combo breaker on jacob johnson boom <laughs> yeah uh so let's let let's let's check with this here would you guys in a back alley okay mm-hmm. let's say and i'll i'll let you be armed with any weapon of your choosing. It can okay. be anything you want. It can be you know, fucking rocket launcher, Gatling gun. I, I don't care. Doesn't matter. Uh, no fictional, no lightsabers. No, uh, I don't know. No, what are those <laughs> little guns they have in Star Trek? The no phasers. phasers. <laughs> okay, no phasers or anything like that. Right. No, no, no laser <laughs> blasters. You know, you have to have an actual realistic okay. weapon. Uh, you can have whatever you want. Which type of of horror monster would you least prefer to fight which one would you which would the one you don't the type that you don't want coming after you the most probably any kind that can't be killed i would imagine well okay that's obvious but let's get let's dig a little deeper than that (laughs) i agree i wouldn't want that either that would suck um you know i mean if i yeah but if it uh, choose between like if i had to choose between you know michael myers who basically can't be killed but he's slow as hell Mm -hmm. or being chased by you know, some some type of demon. I I'd probably go with Michael Myers. I'd probably have better luck 
getting yeah. getting rid of him or getting far enough Dude, away. Buster Rhymes <laughs> de- defeated fucking <laughs> Michael Myers. Trick or treat, motherfucker. <laughs> Trick or treat, motherfucker. Sounds <laughs> bad, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start with that one. Um, the one that I would least prefer to fight. Oh, God. See, I, I say that... I say a, a type of demon. Mm-hmm. I know I know I mentioned that a lot. Right. But see then there's the thing like does Freddy Krueger count as a demon technically? I think he's what just a guy that soul went to hell, right? He right. went to hell I mean, and then he was uh three demons basically made a deal with him. Right, right. And so it's it's like I would I don't the odds of beating something like that or beating Pinhead from mm-hmm. Hellraiser. Hellraiser didn't really ever scare me much as as a kid, but facing something like that when you basically there's there's no it, way it's pretty to much get away hell. from it. It's going to find it, you. It's hell within the personality is Yeah. Is I, I I I'd have to say that yeah, f- facing some type of super it doesn't even have to be supernatural. It have to be some type of demonic force like a Pinhead mm-hmm. or Freddy Krueger would be my least favorite to fight. Okay. Absolutely. But but if I had some type of high end, I don't know, high end like old school monk or priest or something, and some like really old amulet that could protect me, if I had some type so if of you were Doctor Strange, yeah, basically. if I was Doctor, okay, yeah. if I had Doctor Strange with me, it'd be yeah. great. Uh, if I had some advantage with a mystical relic or huh. something like that. I, I think that would make it a fair if fight. If you had a boomstick, uh, a chainsaw, and the Necronomicon. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of cocaine, and I could just stay awake yeah. the entire time. Um, yeah, absolutely. I think that would make it a fair fight. Uh, that would that would probably be the weapon of my choice and the ones that I would least like to fight, though. Um, so I don't know. I digress. Uh, Gary, what about you? Well, um, yeah, I think that the uh, sort of the intangible, um, unknowable monsters that you don't really you can't really grapple with, like Mm. Mike Myers, you could punch him in the face. I don't really know how much uh, damage it would do, though. It, you, but at least you could. I, like, I would feel You'd like I'm be... doing something, even though okay. I might get killed. True. <laughs> but you know, something like, um, you know, just a shadow monster or something oh, that possesses I didn't you. Think about a shadow yeah. monster. Fuck. Yeah. Um, you know, th- 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 something that you can't do anything to stop. You know, like right. the Evil Dead. Um, uh, you know, th- you know th- that again is, I think, the worst and. Um, I suppose that, you know, what would you, it, use? you know, you, 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 tenacity and willpower, I think, really are the best things to to battle with them. Because if you look at like the evil dead, like Ash, um, he cuts off his hand in order to uh, free himself from it possessing him. Right. Uh, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen that 40 year old movie. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's just God, it's four it, years old. It, it is. It's nice to see like the the willpower and uh, the the drive to live is is something that can help propel you to to beat these terrible creatures of the Fey, you know, that are just e- ephemeral and no mortal weapon could kill okay. them. Okay, so you'd prefer. To, okay, so instead of having a physical person or object with you, you just have strong moral fiber and resilience to well like no i mean like you, you, if you had like a necronomicon or you know something yeah. like yeah like a, i need an old priest and a young priest yeah. you know uh <laughs> kind of thing going on that's that 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 would be the best uh, combo to deal with the worst in my opinion uh uh the monster monster yeah dead. okay or something like that gotcha yeah. all right jacob what about you oh it would probably like this is kind of a twofer it's the terminator slash the t-1000 oh <sighs> shit that's a good one i didn't even think because basically that would be horrifying that'd be horrifying yeah. I, that's an action movie but I, i'll take I mean, that that's, terminator that's one is very much a that. horror movie the first, one's yeah. definitely, first one's definitely a sci-fi horror movie yeah 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 and, definitely had and even yeah. just elements of the t-1000 in itself in t2 is very like scares the hell out of you as a kid because like literally there's nothing that could kill it like the old school like t-800 if you can get a bomb of some sort you can kill him but even then like that's like Arnold's it's indestructible, an unstoppable murder machine. Yeah, just and like everything Jason you throw Rodgers. at him. Yeah, and like, uh, but the T one thousand will just keep coming. Like, I'd have to go, like, I have to fly to a volcano to, to find out a way to kill him. And I, even then, I wouldn't even know if I could kill the T one thousand because it just keeps like reconstructing itself. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can melt it in uh, steel slag. Yeah, I gotta yeah, go find that somewhere. Just throw it into a pit of lava. That's the thing, though. It's yeah. like you wouldn't know to do that, really, because because oh, that was oh, by oh, chance like that they even found the steel slag. It, it was by accident. Yeah. But, but I mean, like it, it's just computers. I mean, couldn't you just hit it with a powerful magnet? I mean, I mean it's possibility, yeah. but we don't know. Didn't they do that in one of the spinoffs, like in Genesis or Salvation? One of the crap. Let's ones? not talk about those movies, please. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> Ian, what about you? Um, I mean, yeah, there's that. Um, so what exactly what was it what's the question exactly what, so i was gonna say what what type of and it can be a specific monster but i was saying what type of horror villain or horror monster entity would you least like to face in a bag uh, yeah. or have chasing you the, the one that would give you the most trouble or terrify you the most and then what type of weapon okay. or person or th- object would you bring with you to fight him? well yeah like i definitely agree with the unstoppable murder machine like terminator jason for he's michael myers all those definitely and, and but then again you, you just like yeah you just bring like more shotguns and more, more lawnmowers and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, just move through them <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. the thing about, like, also, Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers is, like, nobody ever thinks to just cut off their head. Like, Tommy Jarvis did in, like, part four, but it's, like, it took you four parts to actually make that decision. Yeah. He took you all these uh, dead bodies and corpses yeah, to figure that out. And then didn't even kill him. Yeah, yeah but I, um, I was just going to have to keep on saying the evil dead with the evil because the evil is not a form. The evil is, like, it, it, it's just a zoom-up camera. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> really though it does that. fear the daylight yeah um yeah that's true but, just live in alaska uh, yeah and then you know oh, or, right. or or or, 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 or actually, the, you know, yeah. speaking of alaska you just reminded me right boom um uh, another um classic of the thing oh yeah oh, okay yeah. yeah the thing would be a difficult one to stop mm-hmm. yeah yeah just, uh, but because yeah, you never know where it, it is. takes the shape of or who it is. Yeah, yeah who it is. Yeah, exactly. The thing or the evil, or when because it the is. evil oh, either oh. can. Uh, it, it's either the thing that takes the form of your friend and just like attacks you, or there's the evil that takes control of your friend and then your friend is just trolling you like, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> yeah, let me maniacally laugh over here in a corner for no reason for 10 minutes yeah and it's like and, and so like yeah in evil dead there, there's just uh ash he, he's just chilling with a bunch of dead bodies and they're just laughing at him you know and they're like yeah. you, you're not gonna survive yeah and they're just like straight up trolling him and you know like if he if he even does survive which he does he at least goes crazy because it's just so right. insane exactly. so in, is in a that great case musical. it goes into like and uh you, you, you know it, it's it, it passes the the physical form is now more a mental form it's like a psychological horror yeah because it then you don't even know yeah. if you're like if you were the thing at that point who knows how the thing yeah. actually yeah. assimilates its hosts it, it could have possessed you already mm-hmm. yeah you never know yeah Time is on my, my side. side. Yes, it is. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Boom. What musical are you talking about, Gary? Oh, uh, yeah, they made an Evil Dead musical. I uh, heard about that. that yeah. um, is it on West End or on Broadway? Uh, I think it was. I think. Well, I don't know if it was on Broadway. It might have been off Broadway, but uh, I feel like because they've had like they've had Lord of the Rings the musical, Jerry Springer the yeah. musical, a Spider Man musical, Poseidon, like, the music, the Poseidon Adventure, the, Poseidon the, Adventure, musical. the, musical. Adventures, yeah. the musical. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've had a ton of shit. So I could I could see them having. having There's an got good one. to be a morning after. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on from that, uh, I I do I do. I do want to go ahead and uh, check to see. Let's get a little more specific down into the nitty gritty. I want to know who your top three. It, it doesn't have to be your not your favorite horror villains, but 
the three <clears throat> that you feel would be the hardest to face specifically. And I want to take the evil from the Evil Dead off the table because I feel like oh, Gary and Ian would both shit. jump on that bandwagon. <laughs> it's an easy one. Yeah. I, and I agree with you. It's a good one to pick. But I want to take that one off because we've already mentioned it so much. So let's let's add another three in. Um, and so we'll give you guys a second to think. Um, uh, uh, Jacob, I'm going to start with you uh, since you seem to not be in that same mental state as the rest of us. Um, who, who, who would be your three? Who would, who would be your top three specifically that would be the hardest to face? Oh, probably, uh, well, oh, God. If it wasn't the Terminator, it would probably be the Predator. Okay. Well, Terminator can be in there. So, okay. So, so if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yeah, if it bleeds, we can kill it. But still, all, that, all those Gary, weapons and topical. technology it carries, man, oh, and its, hunt- and its hunting skills. like Yeah, and it was beaten with, like, sticks and primitive whoop. weapons, okay? Yeah, but, I mean, yeah, come, come on. on. Arnold. Come on. <laughs> Arnold's fault. I would, I would like to put <laughs> Jason Voorhees at the badass. I have no army uh, training. Uh, <laughs> I would like to put Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers into that because they're all, they're all the same. Uh, you know, they're the unstoppable murder machines. Yeah, but they they still have like different tactics and stuff, though. Like they have, yeah, they all the both and those two in general have different tactics than you know than each like, other. But um, the thing with the predator is, is like all you gotta do is just not shoot yeah. him or anything, or just like get in the fetal position, and he'll, he'll just be like, oh, I don't, I don't need you. You're a worthless trophy. You're a coward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no honor yeah, in killing if you. Would yeah. ever yeah. try that. That'd be yeah. Great. And then like uh, if they knew, Xenomorph about it. would probably be another good one. Uh, mostly just okay. because of its abilities and its relentlessness sure. to kill um, and its acid right. blood. Like, even if you, like, just <laughs> like the quote from the first movie, you don't dare kill it, because even if I, like, right. unless I'm sniping it from, like, a thousand feet away or something like that, it's like I can't be up close right. to fight it with a baseball bat. Otherwise, mm-hmm. it'll its acid will get all over me and I'll burn to death. Right. Right, yeah. Um, okay. Exactly. Definitely... Uh, Jaws, Jaws is another good one. Just being eaten alive is, is, is kind of an innate fear of mine. It's just like always been kind of part of me. It's like, man, I don't want to be going swimming. All of a sudden, I feel like a sharp pain. And then I'm like, what was that? And then I like feel down my leg and my leg is gone. <laughs> and then suddenly I'm yeah. losing a shit ton of blood. And now I'm in shock, you know. Uh, right. But I still I absolutely adore sharks. I think they're amazing creatures. I mean, basically the ocean itself is amazing. So I'm not like sort of vil- villainizing the ocean or anything, but it's that fear of being in the unknown, being in the, uh, the, sure. the, like the darkness. Outer space, yeah. Just floating. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. I, I totally understand. Yeah. It's like being in the, uh, the, uh, not the ether, but the, um, the outer from insidious. Yeah. Okay. Or, or the upside down or the upside down in yeah. stranger things. Basically exactly. everything yeah, yeah. in cosmic horror, right? you're just kind of just sure. Yeah. Compl- Absolutely. You just can't comprehend what's happening to you as it's happening to you. Okay. So Predator, Xenomorph, and and the Terminator. Okay. okay. Or right. and Jaws. All right, we'll put yeah. that in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I'll, I'll give Gary and Ian a little more time. Um, for me, I would... The Cosmic Horror stuff, it's definitely scary. I think there's ways to fight that stuff, so it wouldn't... It would still scare the shit out of me. And, like, mm-hmm. you know, th- those are, for the most, you know, half of those are strategic monsters, uh, and the other half are just straight up, there's nothing on their primitive mind but mm. kill 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 that's yeah. right um for me the most terrifying and i think hard to kill honestly um the end as i was mentioning the entity from it follows i did bring that up earlier um it does fall back into obviously uh the the kind the evil from the evil dead that kind of era but you're the only one that can see it Mm-hmm. The fact that it's it's your brain against you, yeah. but there's also a third player in the game as well. It's like three person chess almost, and it can come from anywhere. And it's just like the thing. It can be anything, um, just any type of monster that can morph itself into into something that doesn't signify, hey, this is a potential threat. I better run. Mm-hmm. If I don't know, I don't I don't know when to be on alert. So I'm just going to be on alert for the rest of my fucking life. Yeah. And this thing, it never stops coming. And no pun intended. Um, <laughs> if you ever seen that movie, the 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 thing, fo- the the entity from it follows. It follows you if you have sex with the person that it was initially following. Yeah, it's a, it's oh, a walking and, STI. Oh, yeah, and okay. so so oh, let, that makes that makes much more sense now. Yeah, with the, the coming <laughs> joke. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that that would be that would be uh probably my first one. I would have to say that the second one just because I've seen a lot of the films directly, um, 
I, I don't want to go into the mainstream of, I already said Pinhead and Freddy Krueger, but uh, Annabelle from okay. the Conjuring series. The little doll um, thing? Correct, yeah. Okay. And so the doll is just the form that the demon takes, but the demon itself is supposed to be, I can't remember if it's, it's like Balthazar or uh, Beelzebub. Iluzu? Zaluzu? Something like that. Something, yeah. Something like that. Um, and it's supposed to be one of Satan's most powerful mm-hmm. demons. And it can, it can, they give a lot, if you've watched any of James Wan's series around the Conjuring and Insidious, they talk about possession from uh, these spiritual forces and how long it takes them to possess you. But with this particular demon, it, 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 it happens almost instantaneously. It, it takes a couple days maybe for it to just wear you down, mm-hmm. be invited into your home and then just take control of you. And the fact that they've had so the story for this, this demon has gone on for so long over so many movies, over so many centuries. It just, it shows that it's just hard to kill you. They've yeah. brought in teams of priests to try to, uh, you know, expel it and get it out of our realm. And it just, nothing works. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that would be pretty hard. And the last one is, is, is kind of weird. Somebody along the lines of a Hannibal Lecter, okay. and I'm going to explain why. Um, you could kill him easily, but due to the fact that he is probably smarter than all of us combined and then some, mm-hmm. the fact that he's such an upstanding member of society and nobody would see him being that evil, malicious being or human, nobody would believe you if you said to them, oh, this guy's a fucking serial killer. He's been killing people and eating their hearts and eating their livers and eating parts of their brain for years Mm -hmm. and nobody knows about it and nobody would believe you. And so once again, even though it's a physical human, it's still you against your mind. There's still, it's still three person chess. There's still three people in the mix and it would just go, I think you'd go crazy and then you'd slip up and he'd get you at some point. Okay. Um, and that went that, that, and that's also a realistic thing that could potentially, I mean, you know, fuck you look at people like, uh, you know, like John Wayne Gacy, they're like, Oh, he's a fantastic member of society. He's a philanthropist and whatever. And he's done all these things to help, you know, successful business and a great father and whatever. And <coughs> he ended up killing over 30 people. And yeah. you know, you just, nobody saw it until it was too late. Um, so that kind of shit that's realistic. And that's kind of what gets him that gets in my head. Um, so, uh, Ian, let's go to you. What do you got? Yo, um, <sighs> Damn, <laughs> that's quite a thing to follow, right there. Um, <laughs> shit. Um, I mean, you know, you know, there's okay. I, you know, you know what's scary is I, I'm I'm gonna go with the old classic, the '70s. You know, the the, the classic, sure. uh, the family. You know, the, there's the hitchhiker that hey. brings you to the family. I'm talking about. Hitch, right. uh, Texas hit, um, sorry, Texas, yes, <laughs> talking about hills and have okay. eyes. I'm All talking right. about motherfucking, uh, Hatfields um, and McCoys, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Montagues and the Capulets. <laughs> Boom, make it happen. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm talking about, yeah, you, you know, uh, motherfucking House of Thousand Corpses. <laughs> um, okay. You know the classic. Back to that. The classic. Yeah. You know. You know. The, the, <laughs> there's the people who are you know, out in the no, middle of nowhere. They find a hitchhiker. Hitchhiker takes them to the place of right. crazy house hillbillies where there's a family, yeah. and the family is like way worse. You know, they, they could have a, you know, um, no, like what was ha- it? Yeah, like Sorry? Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Last House, yeah, that yeah, kind of stuff. Exactly, you yeah, know that that whole thing. Just like mm-hmm. an entire like, there's no escape. And even if they like try to escape, then they can't. And you know, there's just this evil family of like Leatherface or whatnot. Yeah. Or you know, House of a Thousand Corpses, where like you know, sure. Tiny shows up and is like. You know, like the one, the the girl, you know, she she's tied up, and then the like the one, the one guy who who like he he's like he unties her, and he's like, okay, you're good to go, and then Otis shows up, and he's like, where the fuck you think you're going? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, Mm -hmm. that is a pretty yeah. Multiple people like they lure you in, and then you're on their turf, you're on their home, they have home field advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and, and then cops show up. Yeah. By the way, cops mm-hmm. show up and they're they're about to rescue you, but no, they they're like they 
just die no, no, immediately. They're in cahoots yeah, with them. Was... They just get killed. And what so, game? what was that movie that? What was that movie that came out where the was like the wife she got married and then the family had to kill her? Oh, ready or not? To keep the yeah. yeah, ready or not? So I like, love that movie. That's a great like movie. That. Yeah, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and yeah, they made the deal with Satan for their their yeah uh, yeah <laughs> their fortune. Yeah, like a that couple hundred years before was well well done. I was proud of that movie. Anyways, uh, you know well, yeah. What else, Ian? Uh, what what do you got to? Yeah. Movie? Uh yeah, um you know one movie that came out a few years ago, which is uh, uh unfortunately very realistic, is Green Room. Yes, yeah. yes, Green Room. <laughs> that's the same thing, <laughs> Loring. That's the Patrick Stewart one that oh, we saw. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That yeah. one actually yeah. just came to me just now. Like I, I was just like thinking, like what else can I think of? And then Green Room just came to yeah. my head yeah it's just like you're, you're you're a punk band playing in the middle of nowhere you get a gig and then you witness a murder and it just happens to be nothing but neo-nazis surrounding you yeah. and they're <laughs> like we will fucking murder you too motherfucker yeah uh, then yeah. You, you're just like stuck in a room and you're just like well we have to f- somehow find our way out of here without getting murdered right Always a good choice when you're in a room. Just in <laughs> yeah. room. Make sure your arm doesn't get hacked up by a machete. Yeah. That, yeah oh, man, yeah. That, that part was really... <laughs> that, 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 that part really was... Done. Like the, the shotgun to yeah. the face at that dude who's like behind oh, the bar. Yeah. Oh, that's like one of my favorite kills ever. The, the guy jumps out the window and he's just like, just sees like a bunch of you know, Nazis above him. He's like, oh, fuck, yeah. right before he gets stabbed to death. But man, just get yeah. just get like an M60 machine gun and just mow them all down. <laughs> yeah, go, so so around. neo Nazis okay. are definitely what one of the most scariest villains. One of the, one of the, most, one of the scariest for sure. Right? <laughs> what, what would be what would be what would be your third? Uh, yeah, because it sounds like you a lot of the the entrapment with large mm-hmm. groups, like luring people in. That's what that's what freaks you out the most. And I I could totally I concur. Like that's a scary one. Yeah, I would not want to be in the middle on the receiving end of that. Um. Let's see. I mean, I, I guess uh, I, to not think out of the box, I would say aliens. Like that, that's an obvious one. Like, yeah, definitely like something extraterrestrial, so, something that like okay. you, you know is re- like that exists. That's like way bigger than us as an entire species. Yeah, like sure. Cosmic okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah cosmic the horror. Words. Yeah, like like okay. a sci- science kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hmm. Did y'all ever see sure, sure. Uh, Fire in the Sky? I think it's Fire in the Sky. Um, no, but no. I've heard of that one, like, actually. That was the yeah, one. Yeah, it has like the most intense like alien abduction sequence. Really? Yeah, it's okay. like... It's, is, that, is that the one with Christopher Walken? Uh, there is one with Christopher Walken. Maybe there's... Where he gets abducted, he doesn't get like raped by the aliens. Yeah, or something. It's, it's yeah, really weird. Yeah. That. See, that's the thing. I don't. I think either it's the same movie, but it's not the Christopher Walken that happens to it. Happens to somebody else. But it, yeah, but that's basically mm. what happens. Like they strip his clothes off, and they're literally like sticking their fingers all in and out of his mouth, and then, like, sticking tubes that's, down yeah. his throat. It's Communion. like, man, it's ooh, it's intense. Jesus. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. No, that, that one's no called thanks. Communion. Jeez. <laughs> uh okay so uh, uh gary what about you all right i'm gonna go first off with um uh either just jack or maybe actually an evil entity from the shining um oh, so maybe yeah, he went okay. crazy or maybe there was like an evil entity that was controlling him okay depending on how you want to look at it um and i think that uh, that kind of is sort of is he being possessed is he just losing his mind sort of that losing control of yourself yeah um so i i think You're not sure whether to kill him or not right yeah. yeah um and i think the shining uh was a very well done movie um kubrick's best film certainly up there yeah yeah, um, and the- <laughs> I was waiting for Ian to chime in. That's I, was, I was, I was probing him. I was like, "When's Ian gonna say something?" <laughs> uh, and then my my second one would probably be the Pale Man from uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, He's cool. the guy with the eyes on his oh in his God. hand. Um, is is that one that you think that would be the hardest to get away from, or does it just freak you out? It just most? freaks me out the way it's that they so you know it looks and moves and like also sounds oh to you know like the. It's- 
I'm we're, do, we're both doing it right yeah. now with the hands over our eyes, like the yeah. eyeballs in his palms. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and it just it, it looks weird and like I don't know. It, that was a really interesting you movie. might be so shocked by seeing something like that you might just be frozen in terror and not able to move so i could see that yeah. being a very dangerous and when it catches up to you regardless of how slow it's walking yeah yeah because it, you know just it like a pop belly or something but i mean yeah. i mean how do you get away from that that's so uh, i if don't you're, know if you're in fear and you can't move then yeah mm. you're fucked <laughs> Uh, and then uh uh wanted to try and think outside the box for the last one so i went with uh, annie wilkes interesting from misery yep. okay. yeah all right. Yeah, uh, that to me yeah. is a really terrifying thing um, to uh, just be strapped down to a bed and have a crazy woman uh, breaking my kneecaps and shit. Yeah, uh, that would uh, and and just, like gaslighting you and making you think it's your fault. Yeah, and yeah. shit, and be like, you might even do this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, it is called marriage, but I suppose you know. Uh, um, <laughs> no, Gary, yeah. it's called misery. Oh, 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 sorry. oh, 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 oh I get the joke. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, oh. yeah, very clever, very clever. But yeah, that that. <laughs> I, I know she's not a, I guess, I guess you wouldn't consider that a normal, like, horror film, uh, but... That's terrifying that, as fuck, though. That, that's, to me, is a very terrifying, just being unable to, to move or do something, not even in the sense of, like, I can't affect it like it's an ethereal creature, but, like, I'm being, like, restrained from doing anything. Right. Um, and then when she burns his book, he's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you burned my book, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that may not be the exact line, but you something like that. <laughs> Those no. are my three. James Conn, that disrespectful motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my god. Uh, okay, those, those are those are definitely not the lists I anticipated hearing from everybody. But okay. those were interesting though. I, yeah. I, I I like that. I was I was thinking more. We were gonna hear like more along the lines of the the Michael Myers and the. Freddy Krueger's and all that, but I, I like we're that. out of the box people, man. We are out of you the know? box people. You never know what we're gonna. That's come why with. you listen to I don't give a flick because you you know that we uh, we care about thinking outside of the box. We do we're making you think outside of the box. Kind of, exactly. Kind of going you know, back to uh, Ian's with the mob menta- mob mentalities. Like one that always got to me was like the Crucible, where you're just complete, mm, yeah. where you're completely yeah. innocent. The, the, the witch the society teams. Yeah, the witch colors. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, thank you. Or the, or the or Lord Netflix of the Flies one that came out not too long ago. Where the which one? I didn't hear you say again. M- Matt Pickleton. Uh, Matt Nicholson. He had there was a movie that came out a couple years back where um, this uh, he was like a teacher and this child accused him of being a pedophile and so the entire town like hunted him down. But then it, oh, School of Rock. But yeah, but then it, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it turns out. Uh, yeah, and then like by the end of it, spoilers. Like he's <laughs> he's uh, deemed innocent, but now he has to live with an entire town that fears him, even though he did absolutely nothing wrong. That kind of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. Scarlet Letter type, yeah, type scenario. God, Jesus, man. Uh, um, so moving moving from that, and even a couple of those picks from us, I think are are not are a little under the radar themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody got any recommendations just on horror villains that maybe you saw the film? Or just horror films in general that are under the radar that made you lose sleep. Not that you liked, that genuinely terrified you to the point that even as an adult or a teenager, you did have to sleep with with your lights on for right. a little bit kind of thing. Okay. Um, so I know for me, it, it's not as mainstream because it followed the first one. Um, and I'll have another one I'll bring up, but I want to give someone else a chance who I think might say it. Um, Conjuring 2 okay. for me. Uh, it... The story was definitely not as strong as the first one. Absolutely not. I mean, there's no arguing that. But the horror effects really just, it got me in the second one. There is that fucking The Nun, which they made a full movie out of, which they shouldn't have. I mean, that was just a fucking train wreck. Um, (laughs) Like most of that universe. the, The demons, yeah, the demon's name is Valak. And there's just these multiple scenes and it's once again, I know I, 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 I keep sucking the James Wan dick. I understand you, that. Yeah, you really do. But the guy is just so masterful at it. Um, he just does such a great job. I love his shots where it's, you see the monster, you don't expect to see it. You see shadows of it. You see, and he does this with, and they do call it the lipstick demon, uh, or lipstick man in insidious. You don't see him up until you don't anticipate seeing him. You see a silhouette, which I told you scares me the most. Yeah. You see a shadow, small demon. but out of, 
and the Darth, yeah, the Darth Maul demon. Um, and Darth, Darth Maul may have actually looked scarier, but they they bring him in at these just jump cuts that just get you. Uh, and with the the nun, the Valak demon, they have her appear. You see the daughter walk out into the hallway, mm-hmm. and she looks down, and you're only seeing you see Vera Farmiga, who's one of the, who's um, Mrs. Warren, right. and she's sitting in the chair, and then you see the daughter walk into the hallway and like piss herself looking down the hallway and she goes mommy who's that that's the kind of shit that scares me and she walks out into the hallway and it's still a shot facing forward of the mom and the daughter and then out of nowhere it's a cut and it's this long cut and you see the nun standing at the end of the hallway and she's not moving just staring blankly and you can't see her face fully because it's a really long lens right it's a really wide lens and it's a long shot um and god just just that scene in particular the way that they they use shadow and oh god it's just it's so great masterful um so for me i would have to say i'd have to say valak okay and conjuring too um but gary how about you um uh, you know i i think a, a movie that uh, kept me up at night um when i was a kid uh and i know johnny you're probably not going to agree with this but event horizon for me uh-huh. was a really scary movie uh as a kid <laughs> and like as I've gotten older, I don't movie. I don't find just, it quite as scary. But yeah. just it's as a totally kid, like, uh, yeah, yeah, when just get- Sam Neill, uh, who always does a great job of playing uh, people possessed by oh, yeah. devils. Um, <sighs> I love Sam Neill, but you know, just him, just like Sucking tearing his Sam eyes Neal, out dude. and just like, ah, oh, that's that's such a great a great film. But um, uh, was it the movie It, the new one, where mm-hmm. they had like it was like this flute player that was like all weirdly shaped and everything? Um, in the when they no no that was what am I thinking of? Uh, that was Annabelle comes home. Was it? I think it was the latest installment. Okay, uh, I think it was Annabelle. No, no, no you're right. It was. It was. He. You're right. Okay. It, it was from the new suit. I'm sorry. You're right. right. It was. It was the child. It was the painting yeah. that he was looking at, and Pennywise took the shape of it, and yeah. then it finally moved. Yeah, that was creepy. Yeah, that, that was a that was a creepy thing. I just thought about it. Yeah. But yeah. I wanted. Oh, to great. Now I'm going to be yeah. up all night. Thanks yeah. a lot, Gary. No problem. <laughs> 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 Event Horizon. That's right. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Uh, probably. Uh, funny enough, it's one I actually went and re- uh, rewatched at Draft House earlier this year. Uh, okay. The original Black Christmas from 1974. Uh, oh, nice. The villain Billy. I've not seen that one in a long time. It, uh, uh-huh. It's still easily one of the best horror movies ever made. Um, it's um, it's amazing how well made that movie is. But the uh, the fact is that you never see the killer, not once. Um, you most yeah. you see is his eye, maybe. But most of that movie, all you're hearing is his phone calls, and they're legitimately creepy. You're just hearing like random noises and sounds. And the uh, the sound design of that film is fantastic because it's focusing in solely on the phone. So even when like the main characters, like all the women of the sorority house are even gathered downstairs and kind of on speakerphone listening to these sounds, it's like in that moment, like most horror movies, you feel you feel secure when you're with a large group of people. But even with all these people right. around you, you still feel vulnerable. And I think that movie actually pulls that off really well because it's like, oh, God like this guy could be anywhere and then the fact is that he's in the attic the entire time um and he's just calling them uh that that stuff is pretty good and then just just what he says over the phone and then his like little noises like my billy i'm gonna kill you and then just like, okay <laughs> uh, it's still unsettling to this day and uh i highly recommend re-watching black christmas i i should man i haven't seen that in about eight years I think. yeah it's it's, it's incredible uh, how well how well it still holds up i mean it is bob Cl- bob clark who did like you know christmas story and uh porky and stuff which is mm-hmm. crazy to think about yeah that's a wide variety yeah <laughs> yeah uh, ian how about you mm-hmm. i'm actually gonna go back to what we mentioned earlier with texas chainsaw massacre 2 Okay. Uh, the, like you know me, I I love the cult classics, and the, this is sure. a very culty one. Um, mm-hmm. and, okay. you know, like the original one came out in the seventies, and it, it was fine. It was good. It, it, I mean, it, it was it was it was definitely scary. It, it it actually you know it freaked some people out. Then seventeen years later, uh, what's his name, Toby Hooper. Or something, the, yeah, the director. The director. Yeah. He yeah. decided to uh, I mean, make something quite different, but 
still kind of um de- definitely scary in in a way of I mean the, you have the classic uh killer um or what was his name Leatherface but he also has a brother yeah. um his name is Chop Top who is just this Vietnam vet who is just off of his out of his mind like <laughs> yeah he like he uh he has a um uh, a co-hanger that he burns with a lighter and then pokes <laughs> at uh, a metal plate Oof. on it on his at, uh, on his head and he like eat, eats his own flesh and he i don't know there's something really crazy about him and he he just freaks out everybody and he, he so pretty much he he's the, just the psychopath that is unpredictable but is still very realistic like he, he could be any anybody he he could you know you, you can beat him tomorrow and he can pretty much kill you at any moment and, you know he he's he's just that crazy so pretty much he's the the you, you know psychopath that you you know um, that's unpredictable that you can beat at any moment god okay i yeah that's shit man that's gonna mm-hmm. be that i'll have to check out um fuck okay well i i think we've covered yeah literally with the exception of maybe just like slasher serial killers and kind of witches i guess we really covered pretty much every angle of a horror villain that you could think of yeah, in this I think, one. Yeah, a yeah. good portion of them, at least. Yeah, a, a good a good portion of them. Um, but unfortunately, that is all the time we have for tonight. Um, so I wish. I mean, this this is a, one of the topics that we have that I could probably talk about for another couple hours. Oh yeah. But, um, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, before we go, we once again we want to give our movie recommendations, especially for this month. Mm-hmm. Um, we are actually gonna jump. We're a, we're about. I think we're two weeks ahead of schedule, so we'll probably yeah. bump this one up uh, a week just so we can get it in during October. So we do want to give some people some recommendations for this wonderful uh, All Hallows' Eve month. Uh, so, Jacob, let's start with you. Uh, what would a recommendation or two of uh, some movies you'd recommend to folks uh, to check out this month? Yeah, uh, I actually went and saw uh, Possessor from uh, director David Cro- or not David Cronenberg, but his son, Brandon <laughs> Cronenberg. Um, and it's a really cool twist on the uh, spy thriller genre. So instead of, uh, you know, just typical like Mission Impossible type uh, spy film, it's actually what if somebody was to take over an entire person's body and insert their mind into their body. And so, but the film also focuses on the emotional toll and sort of body horror that can actually like... Uh, bring because once you insert yourself into another person's body who knows what kind of ramifications they might have on your mind so uh, right. like father like son it focuses a lot on that and then you get a lot of like quick cuts to like like really disturbing imagery of body horror um, uh-huh. and I think it's a fantastic movie and uh, Brandon Cronenberg is easily getting up there as a fantastic director and it's got just like just like his father, it's full of socio-political uh, uh, imagery and ideologies in there. There's like police brutality. There's uh, social media trying to take control of your life. Um, uh, social media so, spying. So it's, it's an extended version of an episode of Black Mirror, basically. Yeah, it very much so is. Okay. Um, and yeah. it's very violent. It's probably one of the most violent films I think I've seen recently. And the, but the gore yeah. is very realistic in that in that sense. Um, but it's, nice. it's, it's a fantastic movie to check out. And it's, uh, it's one I, I would love to talk to people about, um, if they've seen it. Absolutely. Well, uh, you just comment there below if, uh, you want Jacob's phone number and he'll be more yep. than happy to give it to you <laughs> Yep. or let me know and I'll give it to you. And is his fax line as well. For some Four, reason. five, nine, twenty-two, 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 twenty-two. 22, get, get a Mr. Jacob Johnson deliver. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe um, a Gaddy's pizza. And then either. another one I watched last night, uh, it was, it was a little bit more on the, uh, dark comedy, dark horror oh, comedy. Spectrum uh, is on Shutter. It's called The Cleansing Hour, and it's kind of a neat twist on the exorcism genre. 
So basically, like um, this priest had, or this guy who claims to be a priest um, has his own sort of Chris Angel mind freak channel where he, like, you know, performs exorcisms each week, but they're all fake, of course. But of course, like, yeah. but he tries to portray them as that they're being real, and so people buy into it, and they're like buying his merch and stuff. But then one night, one of them happens to be a real demon inside of the body, and crazy antics ensue, and it's honestly like really well done i didn't expect a lot of the performances to prevail like i thought they would like there's actual emotion and attachment to characters i didn't expect um and then the ending is just bonkers crazy like uh, like i can't believe they actually went for it um it's a little hokey like some of the cgi doesn't work as much but for just a tiny little movie in the same vein as evil dead i think it does really well perfect okay uh ian how about you so, as the uh, creator of the Facebook group, Movie So Badly Good, Midnight Cool Classes in Camp. Oh, oh got to plug it as much plug. as you can. You have to do right. that plug. <laughs> gotta be that guy. <laughs> I, I'm, I've got one that... So, this was a movie that actually did many watch parties. Many, many watch parties that I could before Facebook decided to just destroy it is no longer available on facebook i saw that that's that's sad yeah um th this is a movie called frankenhooker <laughs> mm. <laughs> you've talked to me about this it's so great it, it's by the same guy who did basket case which is oh uh, hell yeah great, great yeah. movie nice yeah, Basket Case is somebody who had a, uh, a, a Siamese twin that was removed and put in a basket. And he was a monster that was killing people. The same guy did a movie called Frankenhooker. Frankenhooker is, uh, I mean, it's a classic Frankenstein movie, but instead mm -hmm. of regular Frankenstein, it's, so this guy, his fiance is mauled to death by a lawnmower that he created it was too powerful of a lawnmower <laughs> so she got <laughs> chopped up into little bits and pieces so he wants to recreate her and the be what better way to do it is to go to downtown new york and find a bunch of hookers uh, introduce them to super crack, which blows them up. They like he literally he gives them super crack, and they literally blow up into pieces. Then he takes the pieces, puts them all together, and creates a Franken hooker uh, with, with like the head of his dead fiance and a bunch of body parts of hookers from New York. And then, uh, of course, she goes on a psychotic Frankenstein hooker rampage. And she just, like, goes... Oh, my God. She goes back to New York and just goes on a hooking rampage. <laughs> but she, she's just, like, turning tricks. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's, it's just so fucking insane, but so hilly. It is one of the craziest movies I've ever seen in my life, and I love it. It is so hilarious. And it just, like, the more, the more you watch it, the crazier it gets. Like, like up until the last minute i'm I'm not even kidding the last minute it just it gets so insane and i definitely recommend that one frankenhooker check it out okay all right uh gary how about you all right i have a recommendation that i think i'm hoping that no nobody's seen it's okay. called in the mouth of madness yes oh, great yeah, one I'm saying that. Uh, also damn it okay well <laughs> I never even heard yeah, of it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sam Neill made me think of it. Um, I think it, it's it's a John Car Carpenter movie. Yeah. Oh, um, nice. Mid okay. mid nineties. Uh, basically, so after his heyday, gotcha. Well, no. you know, uh, so Sam Neill basically is a. Uh, I don't even know what he is. He's like an insurance investigator or something, and he. No, he's a he's um, a writer. He's a he's an author. Like. No, no, no. He he's an insurance investigator that's looking for a writer. Remember, because oh, like, right. the guy that right. wrote the book, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, there's this author that's gone missing. And so uh, Sam Neill, um, who's like, I, I think he's an insurance writer for a novel or whatever that is. And this girl, I can't remember who the girl is, uh, go to look for 
this guy. The, he, he's kind of like a very um, Stephen King kind of guy, just living in like a small uh, New England town or something. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a Lovecraft book too, or it's a short story. It, yeah, yeah, definitely oh, Lovecraft. Yeah. And like, basically, as as he starts to investigate the town, weird things start happening, and he finds out that um, I really don't want to spoil it because I don't think a lot of people have seen it, and it's a really weird, interesting movie. Okay. Um, but things just go really crazy. Like it, uh, you know, as you guys said, it's Lovecraftian, so like it's it goes strange, goes straight left. But yeah. uh, that I think is a great movie to watch around. Uh, you know. The Halloween time. Absolutely. In yeah, the mouth I love of the madness. In the mouth of madness. It's a great movie. Okay. I, it, I, it's definitely one, one, one of scene, those like it. character just like goes insane. Like, like at first yeah. he, he thinks he's battling uh, a person, then it turns out he's battling like a force of evil, then it turns out he's battling himself, like his own yeah. sanity. Right. And also, mm-hmm. it's got that John Carpenter doing Metallica soundtrack. <laughs> Every great movie does. <laughs> yeah. You know it's it's funny when I was when I was checking out a couple different films or racking my brain for movies that I'd seen in the past and loved, I was like, "Oh man, there are two in particular that I really liked." And then I was going up to research them a little bit more and like the reviews on them, I mean, the critics just panned both of them. I mean, they just they just ripped them apart. You know, and I remember just in high school, I was like, God, I just I love these so much. Maybe I need to go back and watch them. Um, the two that I was going to mention, one was The Exorcism of Emily Rose that I had already mentioned. Right. Um, and then uh, and that God, that was a solid cast. It was Jessica Carpenter, who was in Dexter and Quarantine um, and then uh, Tom Wilkinson. And uh, the other one was The Strangers. The one with uh, Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman. Is that See, where their neighbors are like knocking on their door? Well, it's actually not neighbors. They're actually secluded. And what they they were secluded in a cabin in the uh-huh. middle of the woods. And they're a couple. And Scott Speedman proposes to Liv Tyler. She says, no, I'm not ready. And they have this woman come to the door. And like the light has gone out. So she talks to them for like three minutes. It's actually a full conversation she has. And she's like, hey, is Tamara home? And the or Tara or whatever. And the Scott Speedman's like, no. What the hell are you talking about? Get out of here. And every time they look out the window, they see like a new person in a different spot in the lawn. And it was the first time I talked about that cinematography I saw being used where they have the main person in focus, but in the background, there's someone standing behind them and it's the silhouette, mm-hmm. but it's out of focus. Right. And it's way, it's, you know, it's 20 feet behind them. Okay. Um, and you know how much I love good cinematography in a horror movie. Cause that, that's just, it just scares the crap out of me. Um, so, I'm still going to do it. I don't give a shit. Um, I thought if, you didn't give a flick. I don't give a flick. Oh, I don't okay. Scary. Oh, okay. You know what? But apparently, <laughs> uh, you know, Ian and Ian and, and Ryan over there, they do give a flick, apparently. Yeah. So uh, we'll let them we'll let them have their flick. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to I'm going to recommend it. Uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, okay. All right. And uh, it's it's a it's a solid movie about the combo. But excuse me, the integration between. Uh, it's an exorcism film, but it also mixes in science and mm-hmm. it also mixes in uh, legal courtroom drama uh, scenes, basically. Um, so it, it mixes a lot of my favorite types of films together. I love it when they they take mythical elements and then they try to put a scientific realism into it. They try to put that type of spin onto it. Okay. And they try to like be midichlorians. like midichlorians. Like midichlorians. Okay. Yes, yeah, like, perfect. Yeah. 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 It's fictional enough to where it's not not realistic but at the same time you're like well they're using fancy scientific words i don't know enough about so i'll give them the benefit of the doubt <laughs> um and then uh, the strangers was i thought had done the best job since post 2000 with a film with a family being stranded in a remote location and being terrorized by um by being terrorized by real people i know it's been done a million times i just thought the the way they had done it was masterful. So okay. that's, that's my opinion. Strangers and Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, anyways, we once again, we want to thank uh, Ian Webb, host yeah. of the podcast, Movies So Bad They're Good, and the Facebook group, Movies So Bad They're Good, Midnight Cult Classics and Camp, uh, for being with us, and Jacob Johnson, host of Recent Jacob vs. Evil. Guys, always a pleasure to have you on, and uh, hope you can come back next week because we uh, had such a good time here. Uh, we get Neil back, and we can kind of have a blowout for uh, the end of Halloween with, uh, with another uh, horror episode. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So... 
So, uh, f- so for uh, for uh, all of us here, at I don't give a flick. I'm Johnny, and I'm Gary, and Neil is around with and us in Neil spirit. Neil is here in spirit. And Neil's here in spirit. <laughs> you guys Ooh. stay classy. We'll see you next week. Ooh. Thank you for tuning in to Lead Feather Productions' podcast of I Don't Give a Flick. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast so that you never miss an episode. Podcasts are available on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are hosted. I Don't Give a Flick is hosted and produced by Johnny Blackburn, Gary Elmore, and Neil Riley. Executive producer, Johnny Blackburn. Technical director, editor, and audio mixer, Gary Elmore. I Don't Give a Flick is a Lead Feather production. Copyright Lead Feather Productions 2020.